I have my bug uh, drawn and then I traced out the other half to have a full size. And again, you want to fit big, um, almost top to bottom or side to side, whichever way you can fit it. So you don't have a bunch of background, you have a bunch of bug. The bigger the bug, also the more detail you can get. If something's really tiny, you can't get as much detail out of it. The bigger it gets, the more kind of line work you can get into it. And so the next thing is to get ready for making my styrofoam print plate. So I have a piece of foam, kind of like to-go foam um, from a to-go container. And we will get a piece of tape and uh, you'll bring it to me and I'm gonna help you kind of line it up and fit it best on here. If your drawing was a little off-centered, I can recenter it differently so it fits um, the best way possible. And we will just tape in a couple spots your drawing onto the foam. And then I like using a regular number two pencil, so not a mechanical pencil for this next step, um, which is to get your first line onto your print plate. So all I'm gonna do is write out, draw out my outline, and I'm pushing with not so much pressure that I'm tearing my paper, but enough that I can see that dent in the styrofoam. So, um, I don't want this to rip into two as I draw, I just want to dent the foam. Okay, so I've done my entire outline, but you don't have to stop there. A couple other things you can do. One is antennas. They're too thin to be able to cut around, so the only way I can see them is to draw on them. It gets a little thicker here, so I'm gonna trace out that whole uh, antenna shape. And any um, other really thin, I forgot to trace the other one, but any other really thin little details like that. Anything that I want to stay white. So this type of butterfly had these little spots that are white on certain parts of its wings. And the only way, I don't want to print white ink, I just want to go ahead and mark them out now. So I would push those down, those would stay white on the final draft. Uh, any white details you want in the body, like for instance, this body's going to have some extra line work in those to kind of be like a highlight type shape. Um, the other thing you can do is if you want to go ahead and separate out the body, uh, like the body segment, and I want to separate the wings, that's another thing that you can do. So instead of just keeping only a big kind of silhouette outline, I can go ahead and divide the body away from the wings and the top wing away from the bottom wing. And another thing is, and this is not gonna be one I'm gonna take my time on, if I were to have a bug that has really thin legs, legs that if I were to try to cut around them, they would snap off, then I need to go ahead, let's just say I don't have any sketch or anything, I'm just gonna show you from this, this picture. So let's say I have this bug, and he's got a leg that is made up of sections of legs. So this one has kind of leg sections. I'm gonna break it up into, um, and leave kind of gaps. So when I go to ink, instead of just being one continuous rectangle, I can kind of sketch out some detail and then I don't have to cut that out. This leg is going to just already show it's gonna be the white of the paper with that first kind of layer. And so I have my whole outline of my bug and everything else. I'm going to have um, these little detail legs that are too thin to cut out. I can go ahead and just let those be white. So back to my original. Uh, before you remove the paper, you need a peek. It's really hard to line things back up. So usually you can tell on your paper because it's darker what all you've done, um, unless you draw really hard. So peek, make sure it's all there. And once you're good, you're gonna carefully, without tearing your styrofoam, because it lifts a little bit of the foam up, I need to remove the tape. And that's not done. It's not ready to print from here. I need to go back and deepen my lines. So they're very shallow. If I were to put ink across this now, the ink would kind of fit in those really shallow lines. So to get ready for printing, I'm gonna go back and deepen 
or thicken my lines up. Now, I don't want it to be such a deep line that I am breaking through the styrofoam. I'm not trying to carve this up into two pieces. If you're almost breaking through back here, that is too much, but I do want to deepen and then also I say, or thicken, you can both, um, you can thicken your lines. The more wide this kind of groove is, the more white you're gonna see all the way around. So you can tell which lines you've done because the pencil is kind of turning that styrofoam gray. And I have all my little things I just outlined really quickly. I'm gonna fill those little areas in too. So deepen and thicken all of my lines. Okay, so I can use my original drawing to refer back. I can check them symmetrically. It looks like I'm missing a dot in the middle here and see um, if there's anything else to do. But otherwise, this is ready to make my first print. Okay, lots of supplies when we're printmaking. And one of them is plexiglass. Plexiglass is this plastic uh, that kind of looks like glass. And that's going to be where we're going to be spreading our ink um, and hoping to keep the table nice and clean, the countertops. Uh, we have the ink. It is a block printing ink. It says it is water soluble, which means we're able to clean it up with uh, water in the sink. It's not an oil-based ink. And uh, we have a brayer. A brayer is a tool that we use to pick up ink and spread it across your stamp your print, uh, print plate. Uh, another tool called a baron. A baron is how we get the ink off of the print plate and onto your paper. I have um, a palette knife. A palette knife is how to get the ink out of the jar because it's not a squeeze kind of tube thing. So we get out of the jar and onto the plexiglass. I have my final print papers. I just have a couple clean sheets of thick paper. I'm going to do my prints on. If I'm going to do two or three prints, I need to have two or three papers ready to go. And I'm making uh, my my papers, I'm doing bigger paper than um, my print is and we'll trim them down. It's really hard to line it up exactly. So we're going to do it on this big sheet of paper and we'll cut that down later. And then I also have some scrap newspaper to uh, put on the back of things to keep things clean. So um we will open up the jar and different inks have different consistencies so you may find that some are more transparent some are more opaque some are sticky some are runny um, i don't know whatever pigments they use that change that up uh, but here i'm going to use red i looked at my image and while it's not going to turn out exactly like this i'm going to do a red background and then i'm going to let there be kind of red spots and then i'm going to layer turquoise rather than the green because i don't want to look christmasy and then i'm going to do black last black and silver work best as my my third layer so that's kind of my inspiration i marked out some of those uh things on here of what i'm trying to get to happen and you know we'll see it's not going to look exactly like that it's just not a part of the process so i'm going to scoop out uh just a little bit of ink maybe like a tablespoon or no less than that two two teaspoons of ink here on the plexiglass and i'm going to take the brayer and i'm going to roll through the ink i start going forwards but that only puts a little bit of ink on there and so then i'm going to go side to side and I lift and if you just go kind of back and forth, it's not spinning. And actually this ink, it's for some reason, not really spinning very well at all. So I'll roll there, I'm picking up a little bit more. And I'm gonna start to roll on my plexiglass. So if you roll part of the way and stop, it lifts the plexiglass, or the, um, sorry, styrofoam, print plate. Um, if you roll part of the way and stop, it lifts it up. So you wanna roll just up and over the edge. It'll start to run out of ink, and I'll go back and run the brayer through again, and roll across, and right up and over the edge. Usually the first print that you do is going to be a little bit light because it doesn't have any ink on there yet, and that's another reason of why we make multiples. You should see your outline, if it is kind of filling in all those gaps, like I kind of filled in a gap here, it may not be deep enough. I may end up having to go back and make some prints, realize I need to deepen, darken some of my lines, wash off my print plate, and try again. Sometimes you get these other kind of little marks. Um, again, that has to do with the transparency of the 
the ink where some of them are very liquidy and and um, just kind of leave different textures on there. Also, sometimes it's a little dense from putting the brayer down. So about that much should be good. And now I'm going to take my print plate, I'm gonna lift it up. I would have a second, I'm just gonna slide my video down here. And I need my paper and printing on and my backer newspaper in the Baron ready. So I'm just gonna grab my print plate from the edges and flip it over. You can see it's really dirty here on the back and it doesn't need to be necessarily lined up but I kinda wanna get it in the center so if it's too far to the edge, I can't trim it nice. And we'll just drop that down. Once it's down, it kinda sticks. Just press it a little bit to let it cling. And now is what the newspaper's for. So we're gonna put newspaper here on the the back or you can just grab this and flip it over. The paper needs to always be facing up. Then we use the Baron. This is how we're gonna spread the ink from the print plate onto the paper. And if you're on the styrofoam, it's gonna be hard to kind of rub. So you have to be on the paper. And I gotta make sure and get all my edges and through the inside. And I'll spend a minute, I do kind of circular motions and along the edges and back and forth and up and down and whatever it takes to get the ink off of the star film and onto my paper. You can peek and check like this and maybe you see an area you still need to work on or maybe you just need to have more ink on it the next time. And I will pull apart and reveal there is print number one. So it's got some weird kind of lines and some missing spots, but that is just a part of the process. It also filled the gap, that extra ink that went in here, it kind of filled the gap up here. So I'm gonna make another print. So uh, the first print, notice it does flip things. So if I draw things on the left, it's gonna appear on the right. Uh, usually with a bug, it doesn't really matter whether your highlight or detail, whatever's on the other side. Um, but I'm going to keep um, every time you print a color, you can print multiple colors, but I'm going to at least print a second one. And if I have any major flaws on there, possibly a third one. So I will get a little bit more ink down and I'm going to reload the brayer and re-ink my print plate and make at least a second one. This is a good thing that two people can do back and forth. What could be happening? What I recommend is while I am inking, somebody else is baroning and printing and, and you know doing that other step that you have to do. And you flip flop back and forth. So rather than one person taking up both the spots, it usually works well for it to be kind of a team effort, which you don't really have to work because you're all working individually, but for two people to work at once. So somebody could be pressing theirs onto the paper while I'm inking and then we flip flop back and forth. Another thing I forgot to say is when you set the brayer down, leave it so that the roller is up. We don't want to just leave it here on the table or on the countertop. You want to flip it onto a clean area up. And now, let me slide back down. I am going to make another print. Now, a couple things. This paper, this newspaper is dirty. So we need to have a dirty pile where any uh, newspaper that's been used can go. Watch your fingers. Fingers start to get really dirty in this process. And I don't want you guys to get little fingerprints all over your finals and I'm ready to grab from the edges and flip it over and line it up, center it, drop it, press it in. Grab a spare piece of newsprint here on the back and I'll get it flipped over. Again, paper should be up. I should not be baroning on the back of the styrofoam and get that ink transferred. Second print, it, um, I think I dented my paper on accident. If you have any fingernail marks, anything press into it, cracks, anything, it's going to show. And the only way to fix that is to get a new piece of star foam and start over again. So if it's not bad, leave it. If it bothers you, then I'll give you a second piece of star foam to try again. So both of these will go on the wire rack. They're wet, they can't stack, they'll go on the wire rack. And then you will go through a cleanup process. So back at the table, anybody that printed with red, me and anybody else that was printing with red, needs to do a couple things. One is 
scrape up any leftover ink as much ink as you can get off then you don't have to wash we're going to scrape this up and try to get back into the jar we have to get the cap back on the jar if it's dirty we might need to get a paper towel and kind of wipe this up i don't have any paper towels over here so i'm just going to keep going and this needs to be capped or the ink is going to dry out like this and then i will be at the sink in a minute so me and anybody else that printed with that color will have to be cleaning up. So you can split up at two different sinks and we need to wash the palette knife. You can't just hold it under running water. That may work for a second, but that's not gonna get everything off. So it's water soluble, you just need to rinse it off and especially get the edges. We don't want this red to go in into, into any of the other colors. But I will wipe it all off. And then whoever's taking the red next, if we have time in class to switch colors, Whoever's going on to a new color, they need to be standing there ready to go. They're going to be grabbing the palette knife from you. And they're going to take that and go get that ready. They're going to be taking the uh, brayer. So the brayer, I need to wipe all through the black rubber plus the edges. These edges get water, or sorry, get ink in them. So I need to wipe that down with my fingers. If nobody is printing after you, then all of this will go in the dish racks, the metal dish racks next to the sink. But this needs to be cleaned up and passed off. Uh, the Baron just needs to be wiped down. If there's any ink on here, this needs to be wiped off. A lot of times you end up with ink on there because you accidentally are baroning the star foam side of the paper, um, or the star foam side, not the paper. So this needs to be wiped up on your own time don't do it while somebody's waiting for your printing supplies but it's next up on my pile here on your own time you need to be rinsing off your star foam you're going to reuse this piece you're going to draw more and cut more into it so i need to get off as much ink as possible it's going to stain it's going to leave some in here that's okay i'm not going to get all of it off i just need to get whatever is inky and going to transfer off don't forget the back i got to get all that off here and then with this you have to keep it so I'm going to get a piece, two pieces of uh, paper towel and I will pat and dry and hang on to that because I'm not done with that. And then lastly, that plexiglass. You can only clean off half of it at a time. So I'll get this half of it in the sink. The other half hangs out of the sink and that wiped off. And then I got to flip it around and get this half. And again, yes, you got to use your hands. Your hands will get temporarily dirty. That's art class, and then we'll get them back to clean again. So all up and down the sides, you can see there's more ink on the back. So I'll flip it and get it off the back here as well. This uh, faucet swivels, so you can use that to your advantage to get it um, cleaned up all over. So this you'll pass off to somebody and they will be there with paper towels if you're not using it then it'll just go in the dish rack but this needs to get um, all wiped up and dried off. Back at your table um, or your workstation you will again have your prints over in the wire rack. Uh, your ink will just get put back on the ink countertop and your uh, whoever's new people colors will be coming out and then these newspapers we'll just stack up all the dirty ones that'll dry out we'll use these over and over again I like to be conservative with this stuff and um, that's it. My first set of prints are finished and now is the time that if I wanted to try another background color, let's say I wanted to do green as my background, um, I would not uh, cut or draw into this. I would need to get in line for the green and print a couple more greens, but I'm going to be good for demonstration purposes with my two reds here. And now I'm going to reduce my print plate down. So um, anything now that I draw into or cut away is going to show the first layer through. So if I want anything to be red on here, my background's gonna be red, any detail I want to be red on here needs to be drawn and cut away. Uh, so from my original sketches, I know that I have some spots that I want to be red. Um, but really, I'm going to cover the turquoise on quite a bit of this. So I need to have my original drawing, I need a pair of scissors and a pencil, and uh, next step would be to cut away your background behind your uh, bug. And if you have anything thin like antennas, that's going to get cut away also. So 
So make sure that you do not cut and carve more into this until you know that you are 100% good with your first set of prints. Um, if I make a mistake on both of these, I would have to start all the way back from the beginning piece of styrofoam to get caught back up to here. So whether you um, make at least three in this color, I print two more in another color, whatever I need to do, because now I can never go back and make that original print again. And the next thing we're gonna do is uh, tape, we'll reline your drawing back up. And I went ahead and cut it because then I can kind of line it up. I can see where my shape is a little bit easier. And uh, I have it kind of flipped over so I can see the imprint from the drawing before. And we'll get that taped down uh, so it doesn't slide and move as you are pressing more into your print plate. And anything now that I want to be red is going to be drawn in, um, or whatever my first color is. Anything I want that first color to show through, I need to draw in now. So for me, it is going to be some of the spots on the butterfly. And then maybe, I think I'm gonna do some of my lines on uh, my wings are going to also appear red for this step. Okay, so I did all of my lines. I can peek and double check that everything is there before I pull this away and then carefully remove the tape. You don't want your paper to be all torn up, you don't want your star foam to be all torn up, so be careful of that. And now I need to deepen and darken my lines. Um, all of those lines I just made are really shallow and the ink would uh, not stay out of them, so I need to deepen and darken. So that's all the lines that I added. Um, as the styrofoam sits for days, sometimes it begins to kind of pop back up. So if there's any areas from the first time you drew that you need to go back and, uh, and lower back down again, if these are beginning to raise back up, these kind of big areas, then um, now's a good time to do that. But I'll just look over, make sure all my lines are good. You don't want to start printing and then realize you didn't deepen and thicken a line enough and then have to go back and wash it. and and all that. So uh, now is a good time to make sure that all my lines are good to go. So I'm ready to print and I'll get those same supplies back out. I have my plexiglass, printing ink, uh, brayer, palette knife, scrap newspaper, my final prints, my star foam. Some of these inks, they've been sitting around for a couple months, so they just might need to be stirred up for the first person that opens up a new color. Uh, that'll be like six people that that'll happen to. And I will just get a, a little bit out onto the right side of my plexiglass. And set that aside and uh, run the brayer through a little bit forwards. I just have a little bit in one section, so we kind of rotate, um, lift, and notice I'm not going to spread the ink all over the plexi. I want to keep it here. If I spread it out a thin layer, then it is going to dry out really quickly. So I just want to keep it right here. If you put way too much ink out and you just put this on here and it squeezes ink everywhere, then you need to scrape, scrape some of it up and get it back in the jar uh, rather than trying to spread it out everywhere. We need to lift some out of here if it is super thick. Um, that's kind of borderline too thick. Um, so I think I'm going to scrape a little bit more of this up and then it spreads more of this out and off of the brayer and I'm going to run right up and over the edge. And I'm running low on ink already so even though I had to take some off I now need to put a little bit more back out like a teaspoon at a time, so as to not overdo how much ink I have here. One of the biggest things I see is kids putting way too much ink out. Leave the brayer um, roller side up, and I'm just gonna slide my space over and move my prints down. Okay, when you do your next layer, you now cannot just stick it anywhere on the paper. You need to aim for a very specific spot this time. 
Um, usually for the first one, I like to start with my maybe least favorite, my first one, because this is the one that I kind of messed up on. The second one looked better. So I'm gonna start with this one here and I'm just going to hold it really stable. And you wanna see a little bit of the white outline. That white outline is around, kind of around the project. Once it's down, it's gotta go. If it, go, if it gets off, then it's just gonna be off. So I can see I was a little off there. It is not a big deal that it's just a part of this process and is not going to line up exactly. exactly. That's just how it works. Uh, I'll put my newspaper down and make sure it's a clean sheet of newspaper. Flip the image over. I don't want this to all get on the table. So I'm gonna flip it over onto the clean newspaper and then bear in the back of it. You don't want the print plate to slip. So if it's really over inked, it's going to slide underneath you. Uh, so that's another reason why to not over ink it. And I lift and reveal and that is awesome. So I will take that set aside. And this is, like I said, a good way to work kind of back and forth. So while I was doing that step, somebody else is inking and we flip flop that back and forth. So now they would be putting their print plate down. Now I'm gonna re-ink my print plate in a new color or another layer of color. Usually the second time that you print with that color, it doesn't take as much ink because it's not a, you know, a new dry piece of foam. It already has a little bit of leftover ink on it, so it doesn't take quite as much. And then I would move over to the other station, the Baroning station, next to it, put my work down, flip the print over, take my time, line it up, set it, uh, find a new piece of newspaper that doesn't have any wet ink on it. Okay, so those two look great. I would um, put both of these in the wire rack to let them dry. Again, they can't be stacked. So that will be set aside until I'm ready to move on to the next step. Um, everything needs to get washed up and clean up if I'm the last one to print with that color. And you have to keep your print plate to do that third layer if your plan is to do a third. Uh, I told you guys that you could have the option of doing only two, but I want to put black on top of all of this. So I'll uh, clean this all up and wash my print plate and carve more into it and get ready for a third round of printing. My print plate is washed and dried and this could all be done in the same class period. I could have just finished my uh, last set of prints and put them up and then now I can work into reducing my last time. Uh, so the, I have a final layer, black and silver. I have noticed work best. You're welcome to try anything. Um, but with this one, I'm going to print black last. So anywhere I want to stay green, uh, the red's already pushed down. But anywhere I want to add the green in is uh, what I'm going to draw next. So I um, have my sketches still here. It's beginning to fall apart, but I'm going to hopefully make it to the end with that little drawing and I'm going to line it all back up, tape it, and press in where I want that uh, turquoise color to stay before I put the black down. In some of this, I'm kind of finding that maybe it'd be easier to actually not put my sketches on top of it, because um, I have a lot to really push down. So I might just kind of use this as a reference and just kind of freehand some stuff in here. So it's gonna take a little while to get all of these areas pushed in where I want the turquoise to stay. Uh, I could also talk to some of you guys about using, if there's a big section, um, you could cut it um, or we could exacto blade something out. But otherwise, it uh, just has to be all pushed down with a pencil. It takes a little while. It's gonna look, be really gray on here. And um, I'm just gonna stop the video and pick back up again when I have most of this done. I finished carving more into my print plate. I kind of deepened some of my lines. I took out some areas that I want to stay the previous color. Everything that you draw into each time is going to show that last color through. I worked more into my body, uh, the butterfly body. So this is now ready to print my third and final layer. And I'll print on both of these. Even though I have a better one, a not so great one, whichever one that is, I'm going to continue with all my prints. So in case if even my better one gets messed up, I still have a backup copy. So I'll set these aside. I'm going to ink with black onto um, 
the previous layers. Give that a good stir and put a couple teaspoons onto your plexiglass. Run the brayer through vertically and horizontally. Keeping the ink to one smaller area. We're not gonna spread it across the whole plexi. And I will run it right over my plexi, or um, star foam. There is the final print for that one. And I'm going to make one more final doing the exact same thing. Usually the second print of a color, since there's already a kind of base coat of color on here, is um, usually a little bit better. So I'll just add some more ink and ink right on top of what's here. I'm not washing off in between this and keep going. Okay, so there is my two finished prints. Both of these will go on the drying rack until they can get nice and dry. Then you'll turn it in, we'll trim it down to just have a little white border. We'll sign kind of down in the corner, we're gonna number them, um, but both those are finished. And this print plate, once you are completely done, it goes in the trash can. You don't have to wash off the last time when we've made all of our prints, there's nothing more to do with it. Um, we are finished that, that can be trashed. The rest of it will all get cleaned up and there is your finished print.